Welcome to Canadian Innovators, the show that celebrates innovation, entrepreneurs, and the Canadian spirit. I'm Jocelyn Bamford, and every week we introduce a new entrepreneur or expert on the economy to tell their stories and unpack the challenges of keeping jobs in Canada, as well as to discuss potential solutions for job growth and prosperity. Canada is blessed to have a rich resource sector. If you look at Canada's GDP, you'll see that resource and manufacturing second sectors are the second and third largest GDP contributors. They are also completely linked. Manufacturing requires affordable energy to compete and to thrive and to develop new job opportunities. Today on the program, we're gonna talk about the move from forces both external and internal to our country to push financial institutions to divest from our natural resource sector. This is the divestment movement and it's gonna have some very real and devastating consequences to Canada. Joining us to discuss is Gina Papano, Executive Director of Invest Now. Gina was the head of Market Intelligence Department at the Toronto Stock Exchange and the TSX Venture Exchange for 15 years. The majority of her research and analytical work focused on the natural resource sector as well as renewable energy. Welcome to the program, Gina. Thank you, Jocelyn. It's good to be here. So tell us about Invest Now. A lot of people haven't heard of it, and we'd love to hear about it. Invest Now is a not-for-profit corporation, which was launched about a year ago, just slightly over a year ago. And we're dedicated to pushing back against the divestment movement and demonstrating that investing in Canada's resource sectors helps Canada, Canadians, and the world. So, so, Gina, there's been a big push to starve investments in our natural resource sector. So who is behind this movement, in your opinion? Well, the divestment movement has powerful financial and ideological support. For example, the extremely well-funded and well-connected group 350.org drives local campaigns across North America and Europe, and really the world, to advocate for divestment by universities, governments, banks, and public pension funds. And, and recently now they're actually targeting individuals as well to divest their funds from banks that are um, investing in oil and gas, oil and gas companies. In a recent release, I just wanted to quote this from their recent release, they announced an international campaign targeting politicians and banks. And um, they wanted to target the politicians and banks over their support and funding of the fossil fuel industry. So they asked for supporters to donate so that, and this is in quotes, so that 350.org can launch climate mobilizations all over the globe to dismantle the fossil fuel industry. So this brings to mind the Maya Angelou quote, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Yeah, It's absolutely. written right there in their press release. Yeah, very, very scary. So mm -hmm. um, let's talk about um, ESG investment. What does the ESG stand for? And how did it get started? And how is it impacting our resource sector and jobs here in Canada? Well, ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. The movement started at the UN in 2004, and the term was first coined in 2005 in a study entitled Who Cares, Comma, Wins. The movement wants ESG factors to become part of the investment process and decision making. There is a disconnect between ESG investing and the divestment movement, however. The divestment movement insists on complete and total divestment from the oil and gas industry and does not take into account any ESG factors. So under the guise of ESG, divestment activists are calling for a complete removal of oil and gas companies from the investment pool. And this is actually wrong and also antithetical to ESG investing. Absolutely. And, and we're actually seeing the impact in Canada on Canadian jobs. I mean, if you look at that pie chart of our GDP, uh, you know, a, a large percent, the, the third largest contributor is in the resource sector. So if you at, at starve off that from funding, you're really taking away Canadian jobs. So it really goes against what we stand for in Canada. So we're mm -hmm. going to take a quick break in a few minutes. And when we get back, we're going to really delve right into this whole movement and what the impact it's going to have on Canadian jobs and on our economy. So don't go away. We're going to take a quick break. You're watching Canadian Innovators, and we'll be right back.
Welcome back. You're watching Canadian Innovators. Joining me today is Gina Papano, Executive Director of Invest Now. Now, Gina, before the break, we were talking about the divestment move as, movement. So tell us about the impact of this movement on Canadian jobs and prosperity. Well, divestment activists want to starve our resource sector of the capital they need to thrive and the capital that they need to provide the benefits that their workers and society in general enjoy. So if the cost of capital increases and the costs of doing business increase, companies may think twice about setting up shop in Canada, and that will lead to job losses in all sectors, not only oil and gas. Yeah, very concerning. Um, part and parcel to this is affordable energy, and it's so important to manufacturing viability. Tell us how the divest movement is going to hurt Canadian manufacturing. Well, the divestment movement is targeting the hydrocarbon industry. And really, the it's, it's not even taking into account all of the other products that need oil and gas to um, to function. Like we wouldn't have so many products if we didn't have oil and gas. But really the hydrocarbon molecule, it's still the most efficient, most reliable, most affordable energy molecule. So Canadian manufacturing is highly energy intensive. Moving away from hydrocarbons means increasing costs, which means Canadian manufacturing will be hampered and Canadians will be hurt and jobs will be lost. So, so a, another part of this that impacts from this divestment movement is the pension viabilities. There are so many unfunded pension liabilities in Canada that people don't even realize. They think that if they have a pension, maybe they're a, a public sector worker, they think their pension's going to be there. Uh, tell us how this divestment movement will impact uh, people's pensions. Well, the problem with the divestment movement is that it's actually, it's asking for a complete divestment from these companies, so public companies. So there's no analysis being done. It's just by virtue of the fact that they're an oil and gas company, they should be divested from. Now, that doesn't take into account any of the returns that are gonna be lost if you don't invest in the oil and gas companies, especially right now when oil and gas companies are on a, a bit of a run. They're like, they're bringing up the index of the Toronto Stock Exchange, but also what, the pension funds, every single company on the Toronto Stock Exchange relies on oil and gas in some way or another. So to ask a pension fund to divest from oil and gas would really, you, they should be divesting from all public companies because they wouldn't function without oil and gas. The impact that divestment doesn't have, it's after a decade of the divestment movement, divesting from fossil fuels has not reduced global emissions. It has not reduced demand for energy and it does not foster innovation. So, so those so, are the impacts. So talk to us how, how it could be. I mean, you could have innovation and in our resource sector, we see that every day. Uh, Canada has one of the cleanest resource sectors in the world, and you could have prosperity. Tell us how it could be um, if, if the financial markets were not swayed by these divestment groups. Well, as you just mentioned, Canada has some of the highest environmental and governance standards in the world. Our resources sectors are investing in carbon tech and clean tech solutions to reduce emissions. Our resources sectors can play a leading role in reducing emissions, but not without investment. So investment leads to innovation. Um, who's to say that the, the, the most impactful innovation will not come from the oil and gas sector? We, we don't know, we can't see the future. So we need to invest in our oil and gas sector so that will lead to the innovation that will reduce emissions. Yeah, absolutely. And we could see that getting our clean liquefied natural gas to market, if we had pipelines built, could help China and India come off coal. So we could have prosperity here in Canada and we could have a cleaner planet. And I don't understand for the life of me why politicians don't make that connection, but we're gonna try and help them. And the financial mm -hmm. community should be uh, understanding that if they starve off this, they're actually putting potentially some of their customers out of work because they uh, are working in the oil and gas industry. So we're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about what's happening with this divestment movement and how we can stem the tide of our resource sectors leaving Canada. You're watching Canadian Innovators, and we'll be right back.
We're back, and I'm speaking with Gina Papano, Executive Director of Invest Now. Gina, there's so much negative press in the mainstream media about the resource sector. What would you say to ordinary Canadians about the resource sector? Um, well, I would say our resources sector is the most productive sector in Canada. Um, our resources sector are Canada's biggest exporting sectors. They're so important to the economy. Resource and manufacturing are, as you mentioned before, the second and third largest contributors to Canada's GDP. Our resource sectors provide good paying jobs. And there's also a trickle down with all of manufacturing that relies on our resource sectors to manufacture goods and goods uh, in Canada. Virtually every company on our stock exchanges and beyond relies on oil and gas to fuel their operations. So we should unapologetically promote our natural resource sectors instead of vilifying them, um, you know, providing tax dollars for social benefits. There's so much that the sector provides for in Canada and to everyday Canadians. Yeah, absolutely. There's so much that we could have if we had a vibrant resource sector that was allowed to flourish. But let's talk about the environment. What role can the Canadian resource sector play in a cleaner environment? Uh, well, as mentioned earlier, you know, Canada has some of the highest environmental and governance standards in the world. Our resources sectors are investing in carbon tech and clean tech solutions to reduce emissions. They're investing a lot of money in that. Um, our resource sector can play a leading role in reducing emissions, but not without investment. Investment is required. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, when you think about it, I think a lot of Canadians don't realize with the resource sector that um, if you have a relative in either the resource sector or the manufacturing sector, you really need to speak up and, and make a voice uh, where there's divestment. So, Gina, how can ordinary Canadians, especially ones with relatives in the resource and manufacturing sector, get, get involved in pushing back against uh, this narrative? Well, at Invest Now, we're trying to target, uh, we're doing letter writing campaigns, we're trying to target boards of governors, decision makers who are making these decisions to divest, trying to let them know what we've just talked about, how important we sometimes the decision is very is made easy because they're not really thinking about the consequences. Um, so as a an individual, you can let your university know, or even your pension fund, if you belong to a public pension fund that you are against divestment. You can write a letter to the CEO, the president of a university, the CEO of the pension fund, and let them know that you are against divestment. You can withdraw any donations that you may make to the university and let them know that you are doing that because of their divestment policy. And now that the divestment movement is targeting banks, you could also write to the bank CEO, let them know that you want them to invest in our oil and gas sector, not divest. Yeah, absolutely. I know when, when I meet with uh, any financial advisor, I talk about investment in the resource sector and making sure that we have a strong and vibrant resource sector. Uh, but I think one of the, the pieces that are missing from this puzzle is people just don't know. They're, they're, yeah. uh, the uh, other uh, divestment side has so many more resources. They have people going yes. out and talking to the banks. And we really need a public relations campaign so people know how important the resource sector is to our jobs and our economy. So, Gina, is your organization doing such a, a movement in terms of educating everyday Canadians on how important the resource sector is to their, to our economy and to their prosperity? Well, we're trying to educate corporate Canada because it's, it's corporate Canada that are, are the people that become, that come on the board of directors of the universities that are making these decisions. It's a very small group of people that are making these big decisions that affects a lot of people. And as you said, the, the other side is very well mobilized they have campaigns going at every single university. They're protesting. They're making noise. And usually, when you make noise, you get results. And um, we need to. We are trying to be in there as well, writing letters to the boards of governors, uh, letting people know that divestment from Canadian oil and gas industry is wrong. 
Yeah, absolutely. And, and if you think of a part that's manufactured in Ontario, it may be a part that's going to the resource sector and that part gets loaded onto a truck yep. and the truck drives across Canada and they might stop to get fuel and eat and maybe buy a present for their family member and deliver that part to a resource sector. So it really is a spoke and the wheel. It's all yes. interconnected. And if you pull down the resource sector, you're going to be pulling down the manufacturing sector and our jobs. Yep. But we're going to take that's a quick right. break and we're going to come back and we're going to see if Gina was a politician what she would do to job to grow jobs in the economy in Canada. We'll be right back on Canadian Innovators. And we're back. I'm speaking with Gina Papano, Executive Director of Invest Now. Gina, how much of this divestment push comes from sources outside of our country? Well, almost all of it. 350.org sets up campaigns all over Canada to compel divestment in oil and gas companies. And as I mentioned earlier, they want to dismantle the fossil fuel industry. So given the importance of the sector to Canada and Canadians, we just can't let them win. But they are setting it up in Canada. So there are Canadians that are advocating for divestment. And we are trying to educate and inform on why divestment is wrong. So Gina, this is the time in the program that I put my guest on the hot seat and I asked them if you were a politician, what would the three things you would do to preserve and grow jobs and innovation in the Canadian, both manufacturing and resource sector? So over to you, Gina, you're on the hot seat. Tell us what you would do. Okay, so first I would offer 0% or very low tax rates for startup manufacturing companies to allow for company formation and growth. Then I would do everything in my power to keep costs of energy intensive industries low. And thirdly, I would introduce policies that will enable us to use our own natural resources that we've been blessed with to our competitive advantage. So let's talk about that, unpack that last point. So what would you do um, to help us push out our great resource, uh, resources around the globe? Well, I would make it a lot easier to get projects built and completed. Um, I would, well, I, I think that would be the main thing. People are in, the companies need to be able to have like a green light to, um, to complete and, or to start and complete projects. Uh, and I really think that's our main, um, stumbling block right now is that policy is getting in the way of projects. Yeah, and imagine the jobs that we could have here in Canada if we got some pipelines through and we got yeah. our clean, liquefied natural gas to market. I mean, and a lot of those jobs are high-paying, middle-class jobs that really fuel the middle class. So really, the attack mm -hmm. on the resource sector and its impact on the manufacturing sector really are an attack on our middle-class people. So we really need, do need to speak up. But Gina, I want to talk to you now about something everybody's talking about, gas prices are pushing upwards and ordinary Canadians are feeling the pinch every time we go to the gas tank. And at the same time, we have divestment. How could all this all be different? Well, at a time where we're, we're being encouraged to buy Canadian, we, we need to support our resources sector by investing rather than abandon it through divestment. So investing in hydrocarbons fosters innovation and solutions. Investing in, in Canadian hydrocarbons ensures that the supplies come from countries with high governance standards. They come from Canada. We should not be importing as much oil as we are doing so, as we are doing right now. Um, investing in hydrocarbons means investing in the industry that fuels every other industry on our stock exchanges. You know, investing in hydrocarbons means investment in the most productive sector in Canada. So that that's it in a nutshell. We need to invest instead of divest in our industry. Absolutely. And, and you know, with recent uh, in the news, we're having all kinds of issues with mm -hmm. uh, we see in Russia and the Ukraine. And that's only going to impact our pocketbook issues, uh, our yes. cost of fuel. And we could be ener energy independent as opposed to mm -hmm. energy dependent. Uh, with the cleanest resource sector in Canada. So absolutely, give us your call to action. What would you tell everybody watching? And what would you tell a banker that's watching right now, Gina? Um, don't abandon one of our strongest sectors in Canada. Don't hurt everyday Canadians. 
let's build our, our sector, let's build the middle class, let's keep these jobs in Canada, and let's get our economy roaring. Absolutely. And we could do all that. It would be so simple to get our resource sector going and support our manufacturing and support the middle class. So thank you, Gina, for coming today and highlighting this very important issue that Canadians may not be aware of. Thank you, Jocelyn. Well, that's all the time we have today. Thanks to my guest, Gina Papano, Executive Director of Invest Now. Canada needs a good strategic plan for both our natural resource sector and our manufacturing sector. We could have prosperity, high paying middle class jobs, and a cleaner planet. We just have to demand that politicians deliver this to us. I'm Jocelyn Bamford. Thank you for watching Canadian Innovators. If you're an innovator, tell us about your story. Write to us at Canadian Innovators at thenewsforum.ca, and we'll see you next time.